It is uh, my uh, high privilege and pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Marek Jan Hodakevich, born in Warsaw, educated in the United States, earned his PhD degree at Columbia University. He pioneered uh, studying history from the bottom up. He did a history of a county in the Lublin uh, province, Janów uh, Krasnik, during World War II, title of his dissertation and later his book, Between Nazis and Soviets. In so doing, he inspired a whole generation of younger historians to do the same, to see how the Nazi and the Soviet occupations played out at the, lower, at, at the local level. He has become Polish America's top intellectual, top public intellectual and action intellectual. Although he teaches at the Institute of World Politics, which is a graduate school of national security studies and not a think tank, IWP, the abbreviation of Institute of World Politics, their students and their professors play a very key role in the formation and the um, evaluation of United States foreign policy. Professor Hodakevich's perspectives informed Pre President Donald Trump's speech July 6th in Warsaw. Professor Hodakevich worked very closely in the drafting of that speech. So without further ado, I'd like to um, have Professor Hodakevich um, address us. And keep in mind that just as Ambassador Vilcek's remarks serve as perspectives that will energize our visits to our members of the House of Representatives and Senators, so too will Professor Hodakevich's remarks set us off tomorrow on a successful Advocacy Day for Poland on Capitol Hill. Professor Hodakevich, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chop. Thank you for uh, inspiring me to attend. Whereas the ambassador was highbrow, I'll be lowbrow. <laughs> so, more Benny Hill than King's English. <laughs> ladies, yes, I'll be uh, a comic relief too. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea what to expect because last time I indulged with the Polish American Congress other than paying the dues and keeping quiet was when my foster father launched the first ever chapter of Polish-American Congress in, in Northern California. Uh, I remember uh, the chairman was, uh, this was late 70s, early 80s, the chairman was uh, Aloysius Mazewski, so a long time ago. That means my experience is with the dinosaurs. You guys are kids, yes. Good old days when the White House stood open before the Poles, and the Poles, American Poles, enjoyed respect. And that's what you crave most, respect. So I'll talk about it a little bit too. Um, first, it's customary in America to start with a joke. So here's a Polish joke for you. A woman from Norway has requested political asylum in Poland last week. Except it's not a joke. Why? It's because Poland is Christian. It's solidly socially conservative. There is no Marxism, lesbianism dominant anywhere outside of the editorial pages of the equivalent of the New York TASS and the Washington Compost known as Gazeta Wyborcza. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in Poland, a friend of ours from Berserkly, when I was an undergrad, in California, and my sister was at Berserkly. A friend of ours got a got a a, 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 um, a Foundation scholarship because he lied. He was going to write about Gombrowicz. Instead, he wanted to sleep with Gombrowicz or his friends. <laughs> so he came, he came to Poland. I kid you not. He came to Poland, and. Uh, then he complained to my sister, I feel like a freak here. And my sister said, dear, because you are a freak. <laughs> yes. yes, ladies and gentlemen, compatibility between traditional America and everyday Poland is unbelievable. 
just like in the United States, people in Poland go to church and they think it's normal. Yeah, yeah, I know about the millennials. They ought to be flogged into obedience. Poland is riding high. Let me take a break from the serious matter and return to how good I feel to be among you. Those of you I don't know, I love. That's how I was taught. And those of you I know, well, some of you I love. For instance, I love Ted Miretsky's family. Ted's uncle was one of my dinosaurs, Mecenas Miretsky. And Pani Lorish. Geez, she's what, 101? These are my people, ladies and gentlemen. So I look around the room, I see Hubert laughing at me. His dad was actually a gorilla in Vuj Lonjo's guerrilla unit. Vuj Lonjo jumped into Nazi-occupied Poland, but he was an equal opportunity killer, so he killed Nazis and communists. Just like his dad. Let's give it up for Hubert, yay! I am not joking. I am surrounded by friends. Look at Mr. M. Every month, Mr. M supports the Institute of World Politics. Why? It's because we do not steal any of the taxpayers' money. So we go around begging for help. <laughs> we do. And it's good people like you who help with the Kosciuszko chair and other program, programs. And Mr. M, every month, helps us out. Without the community, we'd be nowhere. We couldn't get anything done. We couldn't have kids at our school. That's what the Congress is all about, too. I see other friends. If you want to blame Trump on anybody, it has to be Dr. <laughs> Cannon. Yes, Polish Americans for Trump, for better or worse. And of course, John Chop is at fault. When Corey Lewandowski was running Trump's campaign, there was just John Chop inside of a very empty place. And they, well, they played smoke and mirrors so that people would think that in the media the Trump actually had some support. And then because of their work, the support galvanized. You don't have to be Polish Americans for Trump, you can be Polish Americans for anything so long as you are able to exert political influence. You must first understand, in particular those of you who were born in Poland, that you are Americans. That means we can make a difference here in the United States by being Americans and exercising our rights because we also have rights. And our story needs to be told and it should be told louder and nobody ought to be ashamed. There is a great, gigantic, formidable task before us. A sustained campaign to sell Americans of Polish descent and Poland to our fellow citizens in the United States. It's not one-time pop like it was NATO. John Radziwowski told me, a very good friend of mine, exiled to Alaska, a professor of history, told me that when um, he was working on getting Poland into NATO, it was enough, geez, in Minnesota or Michigan to go to a place, meet with the good people in the, par in the parish, and they would sign a petition and call the representative, uh, representatives. In one place, which was established after the January insurrection, 1863, uh, the local citizens rallied and to a man they exerted pressure on their representatives. The place was called Vilno. Fabulous people. I have no idea whether there was an, out, an outpost of uh, the Polish American Congress. No idea. I have no idea. But they rallied. It means there is a potential. The problem is when you mobilize people, you ought to have cadres. I have one person who works with me at the Institute doing Polish stuff, Maria. Maria is our uh, associate director. 
Maria Yuchevska. She's pregnant. She's about to give birth. Yay, there will be more of us. <laughs> but then I'm going to be alone. Maria speaks French, Swedish, and Polish, in addition to English, of course. Do you know how many staffers, just a single organization of the Jewish lobby has in this town, the Anti-Defamation League? About 200. Because the Jews put their money where their mouth is, you don't. What's it going to be? Oh, don't feel bad. You're not the only one. So almost nobody does that. My foster mom says that Polonia has long tongues and short hands. They can't write checks. <laughs> so Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> a few years ago, a few years ago, uh, we were working on the project with the FBI and um, Cubans in Miami. So a friend of ours was putting together a conference on stolen art. Do you have any idea how much Polish stuff there is at St. Petersburg and Hermitage? Yep. Do you know how much Polish stuff there is spread throughout the world because the Germans had shipped it out? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, but, but it's the best kept secret. Just like the ambassador said, nobody knows anything about that except you. And you don't write books or you don't give scholarships, so books could be written and disseminated. Now we have the internet, so it's going to be cheaper to project that message. So here is my story from Miami. Uh, my friend Tanya set up a conference, and she thought the Cuban American community could underwrite it. And I said, well, since you want me to participate, the elephant and the Polish question, so obviously we have to have something about Poland and stolen art. But the Cubans who run Miami, the mayor is Cuban. Everybody else in the position of power is Cuban, failed to come through. I think four or five people bought tickets ahead of the event. So Tanya had to cancel the event. And I asked her, OK, tell me what the heck is going on? And she told me. So I co we contacted the Jewish community, and they set it up at the Holocaust Museum. So we had Cuban stolen art. We had Polish stolen art. We had Jewish stolen art, sometimes all mixed up. There was one story where a Hungarian Jewish woman survived Auschwitz, went back home, and the communists stole their art. She grabbed some of it from Hungary and escaped to Cuba. And then she found her art in art galleries of Miami, <laughs> in New York, peddled by the Castros. Fabulous stories, and similar stories about Polish stolen art. Afterwards, uh, a retired FBI agent specializing in, well, actually killing people, but he also likes art. And Tanya, Dr. Mastrapa, and myself went out to dinner with um, a guy who talked about Stasi, or East Germany's purloined art by the communist secret police. And they were all marveling. Jeez, we had 200 people in the room, seven TV stations, pictures galore. And they asked me, how come it worked out this the, the, your way? And I said, because the Jews put their money where their mouth is. Learn from the best, not from idiots. Learn from the best. Contribute to a cause that, greater, that is greater than yourself. 25 bucks a month won't break you. Because what we have before us is a formidable task. Task that needs to be sustained over a long time. We need strategic communications. We need teams of volunteers and coordinators who can pull it off. Is it possible? Well, let me tell you a story. How much money do you think we have spent as the taxpayer on the war in Iraq and Afghanistan so far? One trillion. Two trillion dollars, not one trillion, two trillion dollars. 
Do you know how much the Marshall Plan was? 13 and a half billion. In today's money, that's about 150 billion. You think the United States cannot cough up 100 billion for the Intermarium project with Poland as a pivot? That's peanuts. As one of senators famously remarked, anything less than a billion is just small change. It is not a big deal if you can create political will. And only you can. The Poles, I'm sorry, they are not at that level. They do not know how to explain, persuade, sway, seduce the powers that be in the United States. We do. We have the means. You just sit in your neighborhoods and you think, oh, we're good enough only for our neighborhoods. What the heck are you talking about? You don't even know who you are. We, we are called the Institute of Polish Politics. Why? Well, because very many people involved with us, including our late Professor Walter Jajko, were of Polish old origin, General Jajko. Mark Logan, well, his name is Przybyszewski, was under he was under Secretary of State for human trafficking. A deputy director of uh, the National Security Agency, you know, air spies, Polish. Don't come out of the closet, come to me. They're just not organized. There is goodwill. There is goodwill. And you say to yourselves, uh, what can we do? There are so few us. What the heck are you talking about? When the leaders of the American community of Polish extraction were index, national democrats, and priests. We got the Falcons, and we got 23,000 fighting men, mostly from the United States, a few from Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what I'm saying? Piłsudski commanded 6,000 people in his legion. Americans of Polish descent, most of, of whom were peasants, and who found out they were Polish from their priests and the index were able to field 23,000, to field 23,000. You need at least a support network of one million, easily. Who was able to put up Kościuszko's monument in Washington DC's prime location in Lafayette Park? You did. Those were very simple ancestors of yours, of peasant origin. And they never said, oh, we can't do it. Oh, it's going to cost. Oh, my god. I need a Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> or something. They were proud, they were American, and they were Polish. <clears throat> Remember what John Paul II said? <clears throat> yes, liberal. He was not Pope Pius, he was true, but he said one very important thing, and I was there in Warsaw in 1979. He said, fear not, nie lękajcie się. He didn't say, nie bójcie się, he used an archaism. He said, nie lękajcie się, do not be afraid. Sky is the limit. Those of you who are unruly and want to be great military leaders, well, maybe you know computers. We need people like the Corzan brothers, who know computers. So they should be doing what they know, not what they don't know. There are many others like this. There are very many others who can contribute. They should just debunk themselves from a wish to be something that they are not and contribute in that in which they can. This is a no-brainer. You have a problem, most of you, because you were traumatized by the communist occupation and oftentimes crippled by it. So the greatest obstacle, not between me and Hubert or Ted, who are from here, the greatest obstacle from those who hearken from the Polish People's Republic is trust. I am not going to rip you off. In fact, I do charity work for Poland. 
most of my time is spent taking care of the security of the United States. But whenever I can, we plug Poland in, as you do, not just by meeting, but by conceptualizing, setting up strategic goals, and achieving them. You have to ask yourselves a question. What the heck am I doing in Polish-American Congress, elsewhere? What is it that I want to accomplish? If you do want to achieve what our ancestors did with the Haller army, with building mighty Polonia under the priests and National Democrats, you have a chance. If you think, however, that you're unworthy, you think that you should be on your knees, licking someone's boots, apologizing for things that never happened like at Wagner, okay. Paralyze yourself. Self-flagellate. The choice is yours. It's time you stand up and punch out the people who have been spitting in your face. It's time to empower yourselves. Look at the black community. Any time in Chicago the cops beat up a black driver, there are 5,000 people in front of the police station. Why can't the Poles in Chicago get 5,000 people to rally for their own? Because the dinosaurs are dead. The dinosaurs used to pull things off that you wouldn't believe. Here is my story uh, of my foster father. The dark, the darkest of the darkest times when it was obvious that martial law worked and the nation was crushed. Solidarity was driven underground. There were only political prisoners to help. That's what we had in San Francisco. When I came from Poland in, I returned to Poland, by the way, on September 1st, 1980, because I thought there would be an uprising. I just turned 18 in London, so woo -hoo! boys are stupid. Anyway, Ronald Reagan got me out in September 1982. I was with my family in San Francisco in no time. And my foster father figured out we needed some kind of a high profile action because everybody was depressed. So he rented a room vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet consulate set up a projector which project projected the word solidarity across the facade of the Soviet consulate. 700 bucks rent <laughs> and electricity. There are very many things we can all do if we just want to. It's all up to you. It's not up to me. Thank you very much.